utterly outraged, which will not surprise you. But I wish it were true that Kingston Hospital's key departments weren't at risk, but they are. And so that is something that will gradually become more evident as more information is coming out. But uh, um, you can go take a look at the website, take a look at the paper, the four pages from the Southwest London Strategic Plan that was sent to us over the weekend that we put up on the website. It has up there the 18 options. But uh, um, take a look at some of the local press who've been doing some of their own investigation. You'll be seeing their stories coming out. That's uh, over the next few days. Many of you will have seen that the BBC reports last night on Northwest London, which is slightly farther ahead, and therefore where the closures are listed in more detail. That's, uh, but you'll see those general principles. There are 18 options. Under those 18 options, only under two of the, out of the 18 does Kingston Hospital not lose a major department. Under six of those options, it loses A&E, maternity, and inpatient paediatrics. Let me take you through the logic, because Ed and I... Very quickly, so that yeah, so I think there's, yeah. there's enough being said that I think it's really important that I come back, because Zach is aware of the facts that you may not be. That uh, Edward Davy and I, in late November, early December, met with a couple of chief executives within the National Health Service. They warned us of what was coming. That, uh, and we then went out and met with other chief executives. We've met them all. We've continued to meet them. That uh, even on to the last week. That uh, we met with all of them, we talked with senior clinicians. In those conversations, people trusted us, I suppose you might say, with the information. These closures were under review, and they took us through the logic and thought process that we're taking them to them. And the logic is this there are four hospitals in South West London St. George's, that's uh, in Tooting, Mayday in Croydon, Kingston Hospital, and St. Helier in Carlshalton. They came to the conclusion that for various reasons, financial primarily, one A&E, one maternity, one pediatric inpatient, that's and one elective surgery unit must go. We didn't know about the last two, we knew about the A&E and the maternity. That's a St. George's is safe because it's the chief, chief teaching hospital. The options don't show us what we learned that some other people may day as be safe because it has a particularly unique population a particular ethnic minority population needs an awful lot of support and the hospital needs to be there and thriving. That means the closures have to come out of Kingston or St. Helier. We know well that St. Helier has had all kinds of expansion promised to it by the government and that even more particularly puts Kingston at risk. We told the various NHS representatives that we met that so we were going to go, now it really is important Rosa, that we were going to go out and campaign on this issue and we prepared to do so. They asked us to be silent until they came up with a full report on December 18th. When we approached December 18th, they said it was postponed to January 25th. On January 25th, they told us it was now postponed until after the election. The report that we were sent in the post was dated December 18th. It was indeed the original report. It is correct, and the NHS has now confirmed it. Now, so this is a really serious issue. And I do think it is indeed a smear campaign, instead of taking it seriously and understanding that we are people who fight for this community, and luckily most residents know that we are people who fight for this community, to turn around and call the smear numbering and try and take the process. The people that you have talked to today, Zach, need to know that they need to go out and fight, not to be told that all is well, so that they then are in a disadvantageous position. We have to fight to save these parts of the hospital. I'm going to go back because I've plenty of time. You talked about the North Kingston School. I've been fighting for that. So the part of the how long this really matters prior to the election <laughs> in 2004. That uh, I continue to fight for it. The petition has talked about alienated a lot of people within the decision making body of the Department of Education. It took the endless effort and energy to get around that to the point that they would agree to go ahead and consider the financing of the new school. And we have fought this over and over. That, and you're right, every time you raise these questions, you've not done so with homework and they are serious. Right, thank you very much indeed. Uh,